I have two needles. One is a sharp pointed one, chenille. The other one is blunt, darning. A pair of scissors. And there are two ways you can close it. The pattern says close it by putting these two edges together and I'm assuming whip stitch it. Um, out of habit, I've always closed mine from this side. So I'm just going to continue to do that. I have to decide which is going to be the top and which is going to be the bottom. This is actually the decrease and it is less attractive than the increase. So I'm going to make the top of the head the increase. Pulling magic circle closed and then using first the darning needle Well, I don't even think I need the darning needle. Normally I go around, but I see this is not going to work. I've just started making octopus bodies. So this is a learning, learning curve for me too. I made hundreds of little mice, which was basically the same technique. I'm going with the chenille. This is a slight point. It's quite a fat chenille, this one. I also have my trusty steed waiting. This is a pair of pliers with insulation tape. And if I find that I cannot get the needle out, I use that to pull it. So now that I've gone around once, I really want that hole to disappear. Now the way that I sew them up as I said, you can sew it from the inside. As I, I work back and forth, back and forth. I don't whip. Come to this side, I catch one. Catch another and I go back to the other side. And I pull it tightly. Tail's going to come out. Every now and then you can check where you are to make sure that you are keeping the edges more or less even. Otherwise, when you get to the bottom, you are going to find that you've, you have one longer edge than the other. But generally speaking, it's not much of a problem. If you're matching colors up, then once you start approaching the color, because if you, for instance, if you use more than one color here, then as you start approaching the, the place where the color change is, you just make sure that you are matched up evenly. See, I'm very happy with that. I've always liked this system. And the, also the, the benefit of this is that you don't have to turn it inside out afterwards. This particular double knit yarn is thick and unyielding and to turn it inside out through a tiny hole is not going to be easy and I want to work all the way down to the bottom because I'm going to be stuffing it through the little hole that's left before I close it off and add the tentacles. Now this is definitely my favorite way of sewing up. And also because this is the visual side, this is what you're going to see. As you're working, you can see your result. Um, if you're working from the inside, um, sometimes you can have a bit of a nasty surprise when you turn it out because there can be a bump or a lump somewhere. Um, 
And then you have to ask yourself, what are you going to do? Are you going to undo it? Are you going to try and hide the bump or the lump? So now I'm coming down to the bottom, putting my finger in the hole provided. Remember this is when we came to the end of this pattern, it was not cast off. The yarn was simply slipped through. So now I don't know whether I'm talking nonsense or not, whether I said that I'm working from the increase to the decrease. It's been a long time since I worked in stocking stitch, at least a year. So some of these things are coming back to me naturally, and other things I have to jiggle, juggle my memory. Comfort dolls, I work in stocking stitch. My mice in stocking stitch. They can be found in the playlist. There we go. So that looks like a small hole to stuff through. But if you have pulled your stuffing apart enough, teased your stuffing apart enough, then it will fit into that hole. You can always use something to, ha to help you get it in, especially near, near the end, if your hole is very small. In this case, it's not. But the back of a pencil, the pencil that has a rubber on, is one of the, for me, I have found one of the best tools. It catches the stuffing very nicely, that little rubber there. And you can also get into the little corners. That put it in place. At some point or other, you are going to need to grope in there because you this is going to be firmly stuffed, it's not a loose stuffing. I mean, a loose stuff. Um, if it was going to be a cuddle teddy or something then you wouldn't want to overstuff it at all. But for this octopus, they are asking for firm stuff. So you actually need to tuck it into the little, the little nooks and crannies and crevices. You get different kinds of stuffing, depends what you have purchased. Some of them are excellent for soft toys. This one here, I wouldn't use for a soft toy. It, even though I teased it apart a lot, it's still form, forming clumps. And the problem is if it does that, once it gets washed, it can become clumpy inside your inside your teddy if you have a soft teddy but because this is for something that's going to be firmly stuffed even if it gets washed it has nowhere to move so you won't find that it's all gathering in one leg or one part of the body You can see how handy the pencil is. And if you are worried that this side is going to mark your fabric, if you work, like for instance, I've got a black background, but if I was using my white background, it could mark it. You can always, sometimes you can buy these pencils that haven't been sharpened yet, or you can just cut the end off, make it flat. And if you dip it in paint, um, enamel paint. It will create a barrier between the the lead and your fabric, and you can keep it just for for stuffing. This, but this particular pencil also writes. 
So I'm going to use a very new pencil. I actually have a stuffing tool somewhere, which is also very handy. It has little, it's used for surgery. Um, it has little, little tiny little pinches in it. You can, if you want to, if you are stuffing, for instance, a very thin part, like a doll or a, something that, like the leg of a doll, the doll is very thin, then you would literally pick up a tiny piece at a time like that with that tool and carry it all the way down to the bottom of the doll. You wouldn't use this method because otherwise, unless you were doing the foot and you wanted to have a lump in the foot. But if you use this method with the pencil, you're basically stuffing it into like a little a little ball in the foot and you wouldn't want that. So you would use that tool to carry the stuffing and put it into place. Yeah, there are many there are many tips and tricks of getting stuffing into something. And as I said, it all depends on the de desired effect and the result. I read that somewhere. I was watching a something on preemies in the UK and for octopus for preemies, and they were saying that when it starts to bounce, then you know that you are <laughs> that you're getting there. <clears throat> they are the, the, the preemies for UK, preemie octopus for preemies UK. Um, they use cotton, and you cannot even have the smallest hole that a little finger can go in. But this one is knitted, double knit, because this is what the pattern requires and what they've asked for. We don't use cotton, it we use wool, not wool, it we use double knit yarn. Acrylic. The acrylic can be washed at high temperatures. Here we go. Hmm. Getting, getting quite happy with that. So you could, that's why you need to make sure that, that over there's my little mice, they had bells in them and rattles, they had all kinds of things inside. And that's another whole thing because you don't want the rattle or the bell to be on one side and deforming the mouse. So it has to be positioned in carefully. But my mice also, they had to be overstuffed. Okay, there we go. So I'm happy with that. I'm going to find out which one is the one that I sewed up with and which one is the magic circle. So now that we have this one that's been sewed up, and this is the magic circle, I'm going to get my needle again. These tails are actually excessively long. They don't need to be. The next one I make, I will only have one long tail for sewing up. Trick is to know which one it is, cast on or the cast off. So I said now I'm actually doubting myself as to which is the cast on and which is the cast off. Well, not, in, not cast on, cast off, the decrease and the increase. This will be underneath. You won't see it. So once I've done that, I need to work away these tails. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the stuffing. This works with a sharp pointed one. If you're using the blunt one, you're going to find it doesn't want to move through the stuffing. I just come out somewhere. I'm not going to pull it tight because it probably has caught a thread there. I don't want it to cause a dimple. Try and go back to the same hole if possible. Once you've done that a few times, you can cut it off. And do the same with the other one. And then, 
will be adding the eyes. So the octopus legs, tentacles will be coming on here. Even though I've made a video on the eyes, I think I'm just going to make another one. It's always can have more than one in a playlist. Maybe give them a different expression this time. Okay. So let me go and add the eyes. It's almost a perfect little ball. <laughs> 